What's up, everybody? This is Rob Shack. So I hope y'all doing well today. Today is episode three of my Gran Turismo Three Rival series. Today we're going to be doing a battle between the Panos Esperante GTR One and the Toyota Alteza LM race car, the one that's really powerful in GT Three because eventually that car sucks. But right now. It's the Esperante and the LM race car for the Alteza. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Help me get to a thousand subs. Y'all are great and enjoy the video. So if you're new to my channel, what I'm doing with this little series is I'm picking two cars that have pretty similar stats when they're fully tuned. And we are gonna drive each one of them and see how they do. And I just kind of will talk about what I think about each one. And then we'll do an AI battle between them on a race where they are both AIs together and then I will with the case of these I think I liked doing this the last time I'm gonna actually have them uh, race each other on like I'll do a, two cars that will be in the same race together so I'm picking the Panos and the Alteza today because they are both in the Gran Turismo All-Stars Championship as opponents of each other so we can kind of see how they do but here we go. So we are using the Panos Esperante first. Um, right away, y'all will notice that this car is freaking very, very, very powerful. Extremely strong. Uh, its brakes kind of suck, obviously, because I did that. But um, it's very, very fast. It sounds awesome. Um, the Panos is really cool. I actually, I looked on their website. You can still technically buy this car. Like, you can ask them to just make you a GTR1, GTI1, and then they'll just make you one, which seems kind of ridiculous, but look on their website you can just like order a. you can say hey can you get me a gtr1 and it is the road going version of this car so it's pretty sick i don't know why they call this car the esperante because the esperante is actually a real model for panos and it doesn't look anything like this so i'm not really sure why they named it that i guess just to kind of brand their other car that they make but uh the esperante looks cool but it's like a convertible and it's like doesn't look anything like this so it's it's pretty funny but um, yeah, so as I as I go through these rivalry things, I realize that when I, they have these two cars, they put two cars in the game together that basically are similar in stats, and it was their way of kind of like giving every car in the game purpose because they didn't have a lot of cars in this game. So with the Panos and the Alteza, they're very similar in that they're both very like menacing sounding cars that are very powerful but very out of control. That's kind of the thing that you'll notice. Uh, but there's always like one that seems to be a little bit stronger, but has more, less handling, and then the other one is usually the safer of the two options. And with that is no different and with these two cars, and that the Esperante is the one that's kind of crazy. The Esperante is extremely fast, and you'll notice with the AI too, it's very hard to control the Esperante, and the brakes are not nearly as good as the um, Alteza. So you'll see that too, because this car is just so powerful. It, I think everything just kind of is out of control because of it. Um, handling is pretty rough with the Alte, or Esperante. It's just very out of control. You'll notice even with the uh, TCS on, it's like just struggling to stand under control. I feel like I could spin this car out really easily if I wanted to. That's the thing with the Esperante is it's just all power and pretty much no control, which I think... This isn't how the car was specced in real life, so I was, was, that was always really annoying to me, was that this car has totally different specs in real life, and I don't know why they never fixed it, because the car always has the wrong specs in Gran Turismo. It's always way heavier than it actually is in real life, and I think it's also like either less powerful, I think it's less powerful in this game than it is in real life too. Because it's like, I've seen videos on the Esperante in real life, and it sounds, Super menacing. The GT3, Gran Turismo 3's sound effects for this car is more closely linked to the real version. The Gran Turismo 4 through 6, it doesn't sound anything like it does in real life. And I don't know why they did that. So, if anyone else noticed that, let me know. Because that bothers the crap out of me. Because, like, they make this car sound almost like the Ford GT40 in this game. And that's a better... That does more justice to the way this car sounds in real life than it sounding super muffled and quiet like it does in four and five and six so don't know don't know why they did that um yeah you'll notice though with this car it is very hard to control even with the steering on and all that stuff it just does not handle super great but it's it, i mean in, in in a way it's that's the challenge of this car is that it's so out of control that it becomes like this challenge between you and the car itself like who will win you know it's like a duel um but 
it is so fast. I mean, this car doesn't really slow down in upper gears. Like, it just keeps accelerating extremely fast, which is why it's so good and why it's so good even in, like, the, like the wind races and how it can actually kind of compete with the uh, Viper, like, a little bit. I mean, no one can really compete with the Viper in that level except for the GT1. But, like, the Esperante is so fast. It just continues to accelerate. It doesn't really slow down at all. And you'll notice with the Alteza... It does not have the same acceleration or top speed that this car does. The acceleration of the Esperante is pretty good off the front, off the line. The Alteza probably is a little bit better in gear one, but you'll notice that the Esperante is just, it just accelerates. It just keeps going. It doesn't really slow down. It just wants to keep accelerating and it just continues to just kick butt. Um, but I keep missing up that turn, so maybe that's not the brakes' his fault. It's just me, but. I do notice that the brakes, you will over brake. You can't brake late with this car. That is very true. It's very heavy in this game. And again, I don't think that's realistic to how it is in real life, but it's very heavy. So like you kind of have to brake early with this car and try to accelerate through the corner. If you brake late, the car just doesn't want to turn and will start to slide out because this car is so heavy and the handling is kind of bad. So like you, the best way to handle the corners is to brake early and then kind of accelerate through the corner usually use the car's desire to spin out to slide around corners like that to your advantage that's kind of what you want to do with this car if you do that the whole race you're fine but you'll probably have to work harder driving the esperante compared to the alteza and i'll get to the alteza in a second i just kind of wanted to show y'all that you really can just slide this car like i barely turn I, I start the turning then stop turning completely and just kind of drift each corner if you can get the hang of that you'll be good to go with this car but yeah it's pretty unforgiving if you, uh, especially if you turn off the little uh, turn steering thing. This car just is kind of unrelenting. So it's really fun to use though, and it sounds great. And when you get the hang of it, it looks really great in replays. So I'm not like against this car at all. Actually, really, I would, pr I like the Esperante more than the Alteza. But I'm just being honest, it's hard to control. But. If you can get the hang of it, it just feels so awesome to drive this car. And it's got Road Atlanta symbols, which is really rare in a, in a Grand Turismo game. I don't think any other car has that. It's also got the Michelins. It's classic. And I don't know if you've also noticed this, but if you look at the rear lights on this car, the left one has a turn signal and a, re and a rear light, but then the right side, it has just a red and then an orange. So that's kind of weird. I don't know what that's all about. But yeah, we're going to switch over to the, uh, to the uh, Alteza now. Watch as the AI screws that up. <laughs> it's pretty funny. But yeah, so you'll notice that I'm going to talk a lot about... I have my criteria here, which to me are the you know the basics. How's the speed? How's the acceleration? How's the handling? And then just how is the aesthetic of the car? I think the uh, Esperante is pretty much better in almost every way, but except for the most important ways. I think the Altez is... Uh, the Esperante doesn't really compete in terms of like handling compared to the Alteza, but in terms of top speed, it just completely destroys it. It's very, very fast. And then the Alteza has the handling aspect of it. So it's basically, do you want the handling car or the power car? And with the Alteza, you're gonna realize, one, it sounds almost exactly like the Castro Tom Supra. That's because in this game, it's not the super touring car yet, so they don't have it sounding like a kind of wimpy car. But they were trying to use another car to compete with like those like the cat the castro toms the uh, um you know the castro mugen all those cars there wasn't as many of those in this game so they jacked up the, the power of the alteza lm race car which i thought was really funny um but yeah see how look at how slow it accelerates pretty much all the way through its gears i mean i have the gear set to maximize its power but even with the El esperante it's like not even a contest the uh alteza is so much slower in terms of top speed but you're automatically noticing right away I'm destroying the Alteza or the Esperante's lap time because this car has insanely good handling. It's so good at handling, which kind of surprises me because this car also seems really heavy. I mean, it's based on the Lexus IS, the Toyota Alteza, so like that's kind of a luxury car, so you'd kind of expect this car to be heavy, but it seems like, and it is, it is, but it's still pretty quick, but it's just the handling. This car grips incredibly absolutely amazing um it can still kind of slide a little bit and the brakes i can you can still kind of mess that up like i just did there but it's not 
So it's not completely like a baby car, but it's just compared to the Esperante, the handling of this car is completely insanely good. It's so good. But again, if you, you'll see when I do the replay, the Esperante is so fast. It's just that it's, it's out of control. It's basically all you need to know. Um, but it's a lot of fun to use. And then with the Alteza, this car, I mean, it's still pretty fun to use. I don't not enjoy using the LM race car of the Alteza, but it's just, it's noticeable how great the handling is. It grips so good. You can take corners so fast. You can take people so quickly, take lines quickly. You can break late. You can basically do whatever you want with this car and it'll, it'll keep you on the road. It's a very well designed car. I don't think it actually exists in real life. I think it's a Gran Turismo special. This car is based on, they, there was a racing modification to the Toyota Alteza in Gran Turismo 2, but it was like super plain looking. And so I think they just kind of, as they continue to modify that car, they added some decals and called it the Toyota Alteza LM race car in this game. And then the Super Touring car onward. And it's really bad as the Super Touring car. It's not a good car. Well, it's not as good as it was. That's basically all you need to know. They really dumbed down the power of this thing. Still looks the exact same from four to six, but in three it just was so much faster because it was, you know, trying to compete with those. They were trying to add another car to compete with that same, you know, GT2 or whatever it's called, JGTC series. Um, there's me just spinning out there, but that's not the car's fault. I just clipped the grass. So that's probably would have done that. That's probably tried to do that like five thousand times, but um, yeah, the Elteza is very good. Um, it sounds great. I mean, I like the sound of the Castro Toms. That sound has been in all the games since Grand Theft Auto 2. So, like, they really, they nailed that sound. And I guess that's kind of what it sounds like in real life. It really does sound like a Supra. So, I wouldn't be surprised if they throw in the same Supra engine to the Twitter Alteza to make it that powerful. And that that's just kind of like what they do. Like, that's the thing that happens with cars is they'll use, like, a V8 engine of, like, some crazy uh, make and model. And then you'll be like, well, there you go. So... I think that's what they basically did. That's what they are saying they did with this car, even though it's not a real car. And that's not surprising, given that, you know, Lexus and Toyota are very closely linked. So if you have a Toyota Alteza, Lexus IS, LM edition, it would have a similar engine to a Castro Tom Supra. It's not surprising. Um, but yeah, the power of this car is very good, but not as good as the Esperante, but the handling absolutely destroys it. So I think if you had to pick a better car here, it's 1,000 percent the Alteza. I personally like the Esperante more because of the fact that the Esperante is so iconic. There's a train going by my house. Hold on. I just keep all the sounds in. I'm a very authentic YouTube channel. So, yeah, the Alteza is... The, the handling of the Alteza is just not even a contest with the Esperante. Um, I think in terms of nostalgia factor, I like the Esperante. And in terms of the like uniqueness that there's a Panos in this game, I had never even heard of Panos before Gran Turismo. I think that makes me like the Esperante more. But I recognize that of these two cars, if you're doing a straight line test, you're going to win with the uh, Esperante. But with the Alteza, you're going to beat them on a corner. Like... A, a technical circuit will want that. And that's why Laguna Seca is going to be the way it is. You're going to see with the AI. Esperante will not beat the Alteza. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. But I'm going to do it anyway because I like to see the Esperante spin. The Esperante is one of those iconic AIs that just can't handle anything. So we're going to show that in this too. So get ready for that one. Um, and then we'll, at the end of the video, we're going to show a max speed test between the two. And I'll show you how good the Esperante is in a straight line. Which is why... It's on the like the wind race, and the Alteza's not. And the Alteza is gonna would, would destroy it on any technical course because its handling is so freaking good. It's just not as fast. So here we go. We're gonna go do the AI race now. What's up, everybody? We're back. I uh, just did the whole race. This is a AI race between the Alteza and the Esperante. There's a few other cars, obviously, in this one, and I have some fun with them too. You're gonna see pretty quick everything that I was saying during the. Uh, trial run of this is true. The Alteza has really bad acceleration, not a good off the line. Es Esperante is destroying him. Um, I will come out of nowhere and smash the R390 off the road because I was going to plan on doing that anyway. But the Esperante is already showing his true colors here, starting to slide all over the place, already wearing out the back tires a lot. You're going to see that trend happening a lot. So uh, there's this hilarious thing that I think about. Well, that 
the, S the RT-90 just destroyed the Esperante, so I gave him a little boost there, hit him, make him go a little faster. So what I realized with the Esperante is, in theory, the Esperante can beat a lot of cars in this game, but you basically have to always be around him and be battling with him when he gets to the corners that he always messes up on. So you'll see it happen here. He's battling the uh, Jaguar. He breaks late, slides through, and then for some reason that makes him do a better turn than if he was doing it normally. Still not great. He doesn't do a great turn, but he doesn't spin out. So he still is ahead of the uh, Elteza and actually is more of a rival to the Jaguar XJ220. But then the second, you can see me sliding all over the place too. The second the uh, Esperante gets to a corner where he's technically not really fighting anybody as he hits it, like this one right here, he just spins out. Just slides out of control, spins and slides and takes forever to stop moving and then turns around and starts going again. This is going to be the theme of this race, so we'll uh, we'll watch them some, but we'll also watch the uh, other AIs because the R390 does some hilarious stuff in this race, and so does the GT1. So you'll see the Esperante basically is proving my point exactly. Goes way faster, better than the Alteza in pretty much every way except for handling, and then as a result of that, totally gets destroyed by him on most t technical corners and tight sections. He goes flying off the road, hits gravel can't handle himself and as a result he loses so it's pretty funny because I, I could have picked faster cars to rival the uh, Esperanto but I specifically chose the Alteza because I was like well the Alteza is the like slowest version of them so you'll see that the, uh, the Alteza does not even have a close competition with him it kind of is close here and then once they hit this corner I'm pretty sure the Esperanto is going to spin out because he nicks that gravel and then, oh, he's, he hasn't spun out yet. Okay. He didn't spin out that corner. So he did a terrible corner, but he technically gains on him when he uh, does that. I remember the R390 spun out there, so I just wanted y'all to see that, because that was pretty funny to me. But then here we go. Tried in true Esperante fashion. Ramps off that, uh, whatever that line, the little red and white stuff is, then spins out. Then rams the wall and then backs up and goes really slow. So it's just gonna get worse and worse for the Esperante, so we'll watch that a little bit, but also we'll watch the other cars because it's basically another epic fail race that I do in my AI series. So it'll be funny, um, but yeah, there you go. So I won't talk anymore. What I'm gonna do after this point is, I'll show the Altezna and the Esperante a lot, but I'll also show the R390 and GT1 as they spin out. The Jaguar XJ220 is solid, as he always is, and then It'll be a pretty good race, and at the end of this, I'll do a max speed test with each of them, and then we'll uh, end this video. So thank you all for watching. Hope this rival series is good. Hope you all are enjoying it. I have fun making these and kind of talking a little bit more. It's kind of nice to kind of experiment with how I sound, and I don't really like my voice, so that's, I mean, I feel like that's everybody, but that's why I'm talking more, kind of getting used to how I sound, and y'all are great. Thank you all for the support, and I hope you all enjoy the video. Hope y'all enjoy watching the everybody spin out in this race. This race is one of my favorites for obvious reasons. Everybody likes to spin out. So let's watch the Esperante spin out on the corkscrew as he always does. Come to a complete stop in two seconds. I don't know how his brakes are that good in reverse when they're not that good in person in the front. So that's kind of weird. Maybe his brakes are on backwards. I don't know if that's even possible, but it seems like something is going on there. So yeah, this is great. Watch him slide all over the place. If they just had a straight line corner, it would be be different. Although I think that actually is one of the, the races in the series. There's one on test course. I'm not actually sure. So the Esperante though gets destroyed when it comes to turns and then does great when it comes to straightaways. So you can obviously put two and two together there on corner and courses that have lots of long straights. I think the Esperante would destroy the, the Alteza. But the second you get a corkscrew in there and you get a corner where he ramps off the little, whatever that weird red and white stuff is, then he kind of goes out of control. And then he's getting completely dominated. I think he even gets lapped. So you get to kind of see that one. And he also breaks sooner, or he pits sooner because he's sliding all over the place. So his tires are wearing worse. So it's basically just a lose, 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 lose for the uh, Esperante, as the AI can't even comprehend him. So yeah, it's pretty great. Um, Y'all are awesome. Thanks for watching. Enjoy.